Welcome to the Martinus Cosmology Podcast. My name is Mary McGovern and I'm recording today at the Martinus Center in Clint. We are in the middle of the first of two international weeks where there are lectures and study groups in English and German as well as the Scandinavian languages. And my guest today is multilingual. She speaks English, German and Swedish. Uh, she is Anna Kulper from Stockholm. Welcome, Anna. Thank you very much. And our subject today is art. And um, I would like to hear uh, from you, Anna, how Martinus uh, describes art. What is the, How does Martinus define art? Well, it's not so easy to say like this, but I think Martinus writes a lot about how important it is for us to develop our artistic side and that art will be very important in the future and art in a way is a way to to give something from yourself to somebody something that you f have experienced or that something that you feel or something that you want to to give and sometimes he even says it's it's a it's a gift of love the art that we produce and he writes a lot about this actually how important it is for us to have art a way to, also to awaken the spiritual side in us, I think. And I, I remember in one of his little books, I think it's the Christmas Gospel, he compares an art gallery to a, a large department store where things are for sale, but in the art gallery, the, this, the artworks are available to the public. So this idea of giving is very important. Yes, I think also, and, and it, it should really be a giving from the heart, he says, that it's really something that you want to give and, and that you feel a need to give it even. And in the department store, I guess it's more that you want more money. And maybe some artists also today are into this, making, having more money, but I think a real artist is really the one who wants to give from his heart. And he talks about different... Um instincts of survival that at one point in our evolution and we're only concerned with actually surviving physically uh, with food and clothing and a sexual partner and our children if any but that at some point we we uh, um, experience art as a kind of an, an instinct as something we need for our mental or our spiritual survival do you have something to say about that Yeah, I think it, it's really, it, it feels like a need to express things that you can't do in this familiar, with the family, with your husband or, or wife and your children. It's, it's another way to show love. And in art, it's really a, a, a gift of love to humanity in a way. It's, it's something that uh, when you get to this point where you feel you need to express this in a way, then I think it's, it's, it's something, it's an important message somehow to people. And it, it, it has something to do with our spiritual awakening, I think, that we, it's not so different from how the, a scientist also wants to, to see how the world works and he investigates and makes research into things. The artist also does this in a way, to understand life, to see, to find the meaning of life maybe also is a way to use art. And I know you have a background originally in sociology and psychology, but you changed track and became a dancer and a choreographer. Um, why did you make that change in your life? Well, when I was young, I, I was more, I was actually into art and, and, and I also went to an art school for one year and I started to take dance training very early. But I also had this one to, to know more about Well, sociology and, and education and psychology were the, the parts at the, and at the academic level where I was really interested in. I wanted to actually understand our consciousness, but then it felt like it was an easier way to do it as a choreographer and dancer, to, to make research into my own consciousness in a way. So I felt there was more this... Uh, trying to feel life and dancing is really moving and and Martina says life is real the best sign of life is that something moves in a way it's it's very close to this so that I guess was and my my want also to 
make choreography as a, to to say things not in words but with movement and and it's also very visual in a way dancing so you felt um, more in contact with life uh, through dancing than through academic work yeah and it didn't it doesn't mean that i didn't read books anymore i i did my own research actually all these philosophers uh, and all different religions and and all different ways of Looking at life, I still read a lot, and the mystics were really important for me also. This feeling of there's something inside of us that that is very quiet and still, but it, it's an opening to the whole universe in a way. And this is also something, I don't know how to express it really in movement, but I tried all these years when I was working as a choreographer. Yeah, I think it was Leonard Cohn who said, and I'm not quite sure, um, something about if you want to know what's going on in the world, ask a poet <laughs> yeah. or ask a songwriter. And actually some songs are astonishingly prophetic. Mm. There was a Swedish songwriter who wrote about bombs over Baghdad long before the Iraq war. And uh, Leonard Cohn has written songs about uh, catastrophes in New York and so on. Yeah. Um, so in a way, these artists are perhaps very much in touch with aspects of the world situation where you would expect that kind of um, contact to be with um, politicians, perhaps, or the scientists. Yeah, I think it's, it's another way to be in touch with life. In, in a way, I guess uh, part of this is intuition, this, where you can feel something is going on in the society and something is going to happen and, and to be, I guess, in contact with life in a different way than our intel intelligence-based science, for example, and the politicians also, where, where there is also a lot of, of uh, in the politics, more wanting to have power. And as an artist, maybe you also want to have some power, but it's more important that you can say what you want to say, like in a song or or trying to do it in a movement, which is not so easy, but it can feel... It, it's um, Sometimes you say also a picture says more than a thousand words, and maybe a dance can also do that sometimes. It, you can reach somebody in another way, actually. Yes, people can be very, very moved by a work of art that can really change people, in my experience. Yeah. Is that your experience too? Yeah. And I think also it, it's very close to this, what we call the, the religious aspect of life which doesn't have to be church religion but but this feeling that there is a something is very magical in our world it's it's so full of wonders and so many things that we don't understand mysteries which is also something you want to uh, to know more and more and understand and and see things and martinez describes intuition as a higher sense of seeing in a way so I think also this is through art, and but also through, through spiritual science, actually, that we get more in touch with our intuition. Yeah. And I, I know that the people who work with pictorial art or any kind of visual art have to learn to see, and uh, they see things that I don't see. I'm not a visual artist in any way at all. Uh, but they see things that I can't see. Uh, I have a background as a musician. Perhaps I can hear things that others might not hear. So you, you develop certain senses. Yeah, I think also seeing, that was very important when I went to art school one year, that you really, you focus on something and you want to see not just the the shape and the contours, but also the life in what you are trying to make a picture of and the same i guess is in dance it's 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 even more alive because it's through your own body it's, that's your instrument in a way where you can send out something that is very difficult to say in words maybe but it it it's it's actually i think our consciousness um, gives the color to the movement or to the music or to the writing the poetic writing, because dance, I think, also is really a kind of poetry. Mm. Yeah. So all art forms are manifestations of consciousness? Yes, of, of, course, of course, because everything is actually a manifestation of consciousness. But in, in art, you really focus on something that you want to express. And, and I think many artists, and I know for myself also, you don't always know 
what it is that is so important, but you feel it's so important, I have to do this, and you get, somehow you get also uh, the power to do it. The, the, it's like life is with you in a way, and sometimes you can even feel that it's not me doing it. I, this is something that wants to come through the artist. Like a musician can say that, a dancer can also say that, a, a visual artist. I think it's everywhere, you can feel this. It's something that we have to do, and maybe much later you will understand why it was so important to do it. You mentioned uh, the word wonder before, and uh, perhaps something that's something that science and art have in common. I think so. I think this this uh, when you go into to look at a flower, you can do it as an artist, and you can see how beautifully it is made, and and all these little things that. And you have to maybe have a looking glass to see all these things. And when you go even further with a microscope and you see all the cells and the things going on there, it's really a wonder, I think, to see. And the same is as an artist. It's also sometimes you, when I, if we take dance, sometimes I make a, a movement and I can just feel that I'm connected to the whole universe in a way. And I don't know how to describe it in words, but I can try to to see if somebody else can also see what I feel in my body in a way. Mm -hmm. So it's also this wonder about life because actually there is so much, there is a wonder for us still, this amazing world, the, the way we can experience so much wonderful things in our life here. Yes. I met a dancer from San Francisco once and she was in her late 60s and still dancing, and she said, but there are so many movements I haven't made yet. And she had danced all her life, and I was very surprised at that, the idea that, yeah, there was there was so much left to do, yeah. so many movements to ex experiment with, yeah. and so many ways to express herself. Mm -hmm. So for her, it was an endless process. Yeah, um, yeah I think also... I was very much into this also finding movements that I, that I didn't haven't hadn't done before but now it's more my relationship to the other dancers when I do a, a performance together with them how we get in into the same energy field somehow this is something that really interests me right now and also it can also be just an object if I just take a, a stick or a stone in my hand and how that influences the way I move it's like an like a um, a, 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 a conversation a conversation with a stone or with a stick or with a flower or with another body somehow and it's it's something that is very life giving somehow to to both me and and the object I think, but and and especially another dancer or maybe maybe many dancers, but also the surrounding the room where you are. Mm -hmm. So I did for many years I did performances outside in in nature and in and in places in the cities where I felt it was a good atmosphere to see how the dialogue between what's around us and, and inside somehow, what happens. And this is still a question for me in a way, but it's, it's interesting. It's, it's a nice investigation field. A lot of us, I think, feel very separated from life. We lack a feeling of connection. It seems to me that the way you're describing dancing uh, and the way other artists express themselves... They seem to find a connection with something greater than, than themselves. Is this your experience? Yeah, it, it's, it happens a lot, even if not everybody really has this longing maybe to have this connection to the whole universe. But I think when, when, once you get into the, this investigation of how can you meet life and how can you be in this conversation with life, it, it's it, it's there's something that is bigger than us it's mm. and and we can't really put a word on it we can try to call it god but but that can also be very misinterpreted by somebody because it's not this man sitting in the in the sky but it's really an energy a consciousness field maybe you can say where you want to 
to dive into this and just follow it. I think this is maybe because I was very much into Taoism before I started to read Martinez. And there it's also this, to just follow life, to just follow all the movements. Something is very good that happens and then something happens that isn't so good in the experience. But it's all part of life in a way, this going up and down and into the darkness, into the light and so on. So have these cosmic principles, for example, of light and darkness, or the cycle of light and darkness, uh, these cosmic principles that Martinus describes, describes have, you, um, have they changed your view of, of art or your way of performing? I don't know, actually, because for me it was really difficult when I started to read Martinus. I, I got so much new knowledge in a way, you know, got to know things that I'd, I'd wondered before, how it all is connected with all the energies and so on. And and I'm sure it has changed me, but I don't know how it really has changed my my way in art. It's 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 not something that I, I can put words on really, but I'm sure it has changed. <laughs> yes. What about logic? When we look at science we think about logic and intelligent processes and trying to find out how things work. Do you see any connection between logic and art? Well, it depends on how you use the word, I guess, because Martinez uses it as, as an, a mixture of balance between feeling and, and intelligence. And then it's logic when you are really into it. Moving, if I take my uh, dancing moving from, from my heart, but also being aware of what I do and, and try to make it into a, something that can be a gift to somebody who sees it. Yeah. But I don't know about how, how do you think, in what way were you thinking of logic, more like the, in, the intelligence process? I think I was thinking about... Um... If something is a work of art, it has to be a combination of logic mm. and beauty or mm. uh, intelligence and feeling. They have mm. to be in balance. Yeah. So um, if your behavior is going to be a work of art, for example, uh, which is very much what Martinus's work is all about, mm. and that is making your behavior a work of art so, mm. so that you're totally loving in all circumstances. And, of course, that's rather far ahead for all of us. Yeah. But... Um, he talks about foolish kindness, for example, where uh, your kindness is not tempered by intelligence. So perhaps you can't say no to your child when they want not just one ice cream but two or mm. when they want to do something that's dangerous. But you're, you have so much energy of feeling, as he calls it, that you can't say no. But that's rather unintelligent because you know it has uh, dire consequences later on. Mm. So if your behavior is going to be perfect... These two things have to be com combined. Mm. And if you look at things like uh, at atomic weapons and all sorts of weapons and warfare and all techniques for warfare, there they can be very logical. There's a lot of um, fantastic technology involved yeah. in these yeah. things, yeah. but there's very little um, warmth. There's uh, Where's the human heart in it? Mm. So Martinus talks very much about this balance of intelligence and feeling and I mean if you look at someone like Bach mm. he's a brilliant uh, mathematician his works are mm. so intelligently written mm. Mm. but they wouldn't be worth anything if they didn't affect our feelings mm. so I think I'm trying to hone in on this this yeah. balance between intelligence and feeling that's necessary in order to some, for something to be a logical work of art yeah. <laughs> that actually communicates something that has to do with one's feelings. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. <laughs> yeah, it does in a way. But I think also we have to accept that we are not perfect yet. We, we are oh, trying we to try. to have both intelligence and feeling in the work. And maybe artists are more into the feeling part of it. But I think more and more also the intelligence has to come into it. And I think if you go to dancing, it has maybe something to do with how you move your body because many dancers are really very tough on their body. Yeah. But the way I've been working for a long time, I'm, I'm trying to make the body so soft and alive that it's also taking care of all the 
the micro beings that are living inside of us, that the whole body is also in a good shape. And then it can also, I think, give more the impression of what I want to show with my movement from my heart in a way. So maybe that's a way. Yes, so you're really taking care of the instrument. Yeah. So that you can express what you yeah, want to with yeah. the instrument. It's a bit like a, an instrumentalist learning really good technique. Yeah. So they can actually express what they want to express emotionally, yeah. unhindered by sort of technical faults and yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I guess that's the same. But then when you get older, your instrument also gets a bit older. I'm trying to keep it in good shape. But, but now also I don't have the, the longing or the need really to... to make dance performances, choreography so, like that, like I used to when I was younger. It feels now good for me to be into this Martinus uh, spiritual science also. Do you regard uh, Martinus's works as works of art? Yes, I think he's really the genius who can do this with love and feeling and also with intelligence and then, of course, the intuition that comes in when you have this balance. And I'm really enjoying sometimes both some parts where he writes so beautiful about nature and, and but also the way he does his writing. It's not just uh, like an, with intelligence you would put a lot of things in a, in a square box, but he goes back and forth in his thought and sometimes it's, it's very poetic and sometimes it's really difficult to understand and he's like a mystic in a way for us and, and then he comes to something very, that makes it very clear for us and so he's really, He's alive. His whole work is really art, I think. And I guess also he, the way he was living was also a piece of art. So many people talk about how wonderful it was to be with him, that he enjoyed everything, every meeting, everything that he met was really a joy for him, which I think is really the best way mm -hmm. to make an art work of your life. Yeah. Did you meet Martinus yourself? No, unfortunately, I didn't do that. But I've I've seen the films that have been done where people talk about him and their memories about him, and I've seen so many pictures where he looks so wonderful, and and many people have told me also how how it was to see him. He had a wonderful sense of humor, and I think uh, humor is. Uh, one of the hu humane characteristics that Martinus mentions uh, is something that will develop. I remember growing up and people saying, well, if you were happy, then you hadn't understand how serious the world situation was. There wasn't any reason to be happy uh, or to smile or to make jokes or have a sense of humor. And you just hadn't understood things. But Martinus sees things from a total perspective, an internal perspective. So... You, you, if you hear him on tape, he does laugh a lot, yeah. and uh, he, he liked to entertain people. Um. Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, and I think also in, 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 in your artwork, you can be very serious, but you can also have this... For me, I know when I was interviewed sometimes, I, I try to explain what I wanted to say, and because you don't say it in words, you say it in movements, but I often came to this, I want people to have a small smile in their heart. This is something, and it's, it's maybe not the, the humor where you laugh a lot, it's, it's like a quiet, quiet laugh inside, which is really the, this happy feeling of being alive, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's something that I, I think I wanted really to express with my dancing. I guess everybody, everyone here at the Martino Center comes here for inspiration on their journey towards becoming artists in the art of living. Mm. <laughs> and that's, of course, the ultimate task. Um, do you have any advice for people who want to be artists of life? I think the best way is really to understand what Martinus says about the whole universe and how everything is connected, how everything is working together and, and really feel it inside of you and to see also that even if the world looks dark right now, it's really an important part of our development and the development of the whole globe actually. So we are 
at the, we can even if it looks dark we can also have this happiness inside of us because we know it's going to be better and maybe it's going to be a bit worse first but then it's going to be better so i think to have this it makes uh, it gives you a peace somehow inside and you can take I guess almost everything you can say it at least you don't know really when th- something really terrible happens we don't know really how we will react but I think by by having Martinus spirit of science in in our heart in a way it makes life so much easier and you can enjoy so much more on those um, helpful words I th- I think we'll stop here thank you very much Anne for joining the Martinus Cosmology podcast Thank you very much.